Hi, everyone. Welcome to the lecture for this week, where we are looking at values education. So the required reading for this week is here on your screen, just at the top from the Green and Price textbook, and a couple of extra readings for you to look at in the reading list. And if you would like, you can have a look at the uh, reading from the Gilbert textbook. So as I said, we're looking at values education this week. Really important to, as you're going through this lecture, to be thinking about how values education is connected to perspectives. And the types of questions that we ask really engage students in thinking about their own values through an exploration into the different perspectives other, others have. So when you're, we're asking values questions, we are inviting students to reflect and listen to other students in the classroom who may have different opinions than them. And this is a skill in itself is getting people to listen to each other. Okay, so the types of questions that we can ask in, for, in values education, some great examples in the Green and Price textbook, but as I said in the weekly overview video, I quite like the questions that start with should because it offers the opportunity for students to uh, present different opinions. So more than likely you'll have students who have different opinions on something, um, and asking, should we, should something, something, um, students will say yes or no. So the should type questions are quite good because they give that opportunity for students to listen to other students who may have a different opinion than them. For example, should archaeologists dig up bones from those in the past? Some students may think yes, and some may think no. And this is an opportunity for students to have a chance to listen to somebody who has a different opinion from them, which is a skill, really. And um, being able to listen, not over speak, not talk over people, and really take the time to li listen to different perspectives. So really think about how that plays out in the classroom, how values education, which is really important in the Haas curriculum, is connected to perspectives, which we've been talking about in this unit anyways. So last week and this week are really interconnected quite well. All right, let's go on to the lecture. So this week we're looking at these questions that are on the PowerPoint. Um, what are our values? How do we learn and develop values? What values should be taught? What values are taught in geography? and what teaching approaches are used when investigating values explicitly. Should teachers avoid teaching issues that involve values, if that's even possible? So the first part of the chapter that you have to read, and I'm going to go over the chapter specifically first before we move into focusing a little bit more on geography. Um, the first chat part of the chapter overviews the definition of what values is and the use of a whole school approach to values education. So values is defined as the principles or standards of behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. Um, the whole school approach to values education um, is meant to be consistent and explicit across the school. Gilbert defines values education as saying that it should also consciously foster intercultural understanding, social cohesion and social inclusion, which is which are key parts of the Haas curriculum. So values need to be explicit, so they need to be obvious, they need to be focused on student well-being, and they need to foster a sense of belonging and connection to communities. So the Australian government uh, report called Giving Voice to the Impacts of Values Education actually highlights the importance of establishing shared values in a school but also making them explicit to students in the community. So have a think about the schools that you went to when you were younger, or maybe schools that you've taught in or had a prac in. You know, those little mottos that schools have. I was thinking about those and how um, they can be a part of the whole school approach to values education. So some that come to mind um, from schools that I've worked at, respect, excellence, diversity, enjoyment. So that's one Learning today, creating tomorrow. A uh, couple of others. Make the difference today for tomorrow. Respect, responsibility, unity, discovery. And another one, soaring to great heights. And some of the ones in Armadale, some of the schools, I looked them up, uh, founded on faith, focused on learning. Um, another one, our future, our learning. And one more, explore, 
experience, and excel. So what are the, what are the ones that you remember or have you seen? Um, so thinking about if your, schools had a, your school had a values framework, did it work? And, or didn't it work? Do you th or in, when, if you've worked in schools, did you find that schools focused on the whole school approach? I've seen it consistently. I've seen students um, sort of put their back up against it as well. Um, I, I have asked students that question in the past, and a lot of students have said that they've seen students in schools not to completely interested in the whole school approach necessarily, but not having that whole school approach could be a step in the wrong direction. So as Gilbert states, values education needs to be focused on the student well-being. And that's what the important part is. So not having that, I think I would agree that it's a step in the wrong direction because it can create that sense of belonging to that school community. And as teachers, values education becomes a very significant part of our relationship with students, even through our own behavior management strategies. And we can draw on that um, whole school approach. So how do we learn values? Can values change in our lifetime? What causes change? So genetic altruism. So it's, that's the idea that we are human beings who like to help each other. There's a type of uh, relationship there where we want to be able to help um, other humans in our lives. So it's kind of like embedded in our genetics, basically. Um, inculcation from family, school, and community. So we learn a little bit about our values from, you know, our own families and so forth. And also if we have any religious beliefs that can influence our values, um, there can be a conflict of values that arise between what we have, values that we have at home, maybe what students are learning at school, um, global issues that they might see, you know, on TV or and so forth can start, start to have uh, influence changes in values. What causes these changes? Well, learn, the more we learn, the more we start to negotiate our own values that we've had since we were younger. Maybe that starts to change. Um, conflict can create changes in values, our own personal experiences, and also societal changes, things that we notice in society. So this slide overviews the different types of talk that can occur when discussing controversial issues with students. Um, so students can find it difficult to view values in comprehensive ways. And Mercer discusses three types of talk when discussing controversial issues. So the first one is disputational. That's sort of like debating. In this case, students can become maybe a little bit opinionated, which is great. Um, in older grades, they could become quite argumentative, especially if they're very passionate about the topic. And I'm speaking more about perhaps in high school, it can become quite argumentative uh, and difficult to manage in some ways. But it is great to see passion in students, especially about topics they're very much interested in. And this sort of style, though, however, can be sometimes uh, counterproductive because um, it can become a little bit people more focused on hearing what they have to say themselves rather than hearing what other people have to say, which is important. We want to hear other people's opinions and be respectful of other people's opinions, empathetic understanding. Um, students need to learn about the recognizing other points of views and respecting those opinions. So in cumulative talk, uh, everyone agrees on one point of view and the conversation just ends. So um, when that happens, the teacher can be a devil's advocate. I've done that plenty of times um, and presenting the other points of view. That can be quite handy. In the exploratory talk, students are critical but respectful of each other's point of view. So this is the ideal way of dealing with different uh, controversial issues and what we should be aiming for as teachers. In exploratory talk, students are more successful at solving problems because they are working together to come to some sort of agreement on what could be done. So this slide overviews the ways in which teachers can use exploratory talk in a lesson. 
So for ex an example, um, a teacher could use analogies um, for sensitive issues, maybe playing the de devil's advocate, as stated before, um, could be using role play. Uh, that's a great way to create empathetic understanding is to get students to position themselves as holding someone else's point of view and using case studies or even guest speakers if students need more information about a topic. That's if the issue is not clear and they need a little bit more information to be able to think about different values and different opinions on controversial issues. So um, values education in society and environment the curriculum. So soci society and environment subjects are focused on people and interactions with each other and the environment. So inevitably, values comes into these types of discussions. So I'm going to ask you this week, what are some examples of value values-based topics and has subjects? You can think back to the history that we've just looked at and start thinking about um, geography as we look at the syllabus there. So what are some examples? of values-based topics. Teachers need to foster an openness and understanding of different points of view. And that's the main point that we need to be taking here, that there are different points of view, there are different perspectives, and we need to listen to each other. That's what we want students to come away with a lot in our lessons. So there are different um, strategies on how to deal with um, how to incorporate values education into the classroom. So I'm going to go through a few of them here. So there's values inculcation, values analysis, moral reasoning, values clarification, and action learning. So values inculcation uh, is quite handy in the more younger years. Uh, it attempts to instill values that are deemed desirable to an individual, okay, a community or an ethnic group, a society or nation, or which can be seen as a universally desirable. So it may be simply listening when other people are talking, you know, instilling that value that students need to be quiet and um, listening to each other. That can just be part of values inculcation there. So are there basic values in our society that need to be transmitted to students? Non-negotiables. Have a think about that. Um, values analysis. Uh, aims to help students to use logical and anal analytical processes to identify and analyze people's values. So in order to do this, you're selecting some type of information source that might exemplify, exemplify a values-related behavior, identifying the behavior of different groups, um, thinking about reasons for their behavior, and the types of values that would be held, category, categorizing individuals and groups with similar values, identifying values, differences in our values, differences and conflicts, possible sources of values, and generalizing about values held and the reasons for and effects of this. So I'm just going to show you this link here. Now this is an example that I've used. Just take us out of here for a moment. This is an example that I've used um, when I teach the secondary students. And this is something that students can actually look at in um, year seven, so coming from primary school, just to give you an idea of what all this means on the slide. So what does this mean when you're analyzing values? I've read a bunch of theory and pro a process there. What, what does that look like? Well, for example, um, I've shared this. Oops. Okay, let's get rid of that. This article here is about, um, so in year seven students, their first subject in history, it, they look at um, archaeology. That's what they're looking at. Um, it's their first exploration into the ancient past because in primary school they've looked at uh, up to national history. So now they're looking a little bit at ancient history. Now this um, article here could be something that's used in values analysis where the article talks about digging up graves um, Aboriginal graves and students at an older level could read through so this could be an information source where the teacher goes through what's going on um, on these different sites and so forth and the question becomes is it should we dig 
up graves, indigenous grave sites. Um, is it appropriate or is it not appropriate? Devil's advocate could say um, we should be doing this because it could help with understanding the ancient past. But the other side of it is that it is sacred and we, it should be left alone. So that brings up a lot of values too, where students have to question different points of view. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you. I thought that would help you understand about trying to help students um, analyze processes to identify people's values. So we could talk about the values of the researchers and we could talk about the values of the Aboriginal people wanting to keep their grave sites sacred and what's important to them. Those different ideas there. All right, moral reasoning. So uh, this aims to stimulate moral reasoning. Uh, assumes that children develop through different stages of moral reasoning. So they may look at a moral dilemma, so an actual or hypothetical situation. Um, the dilemma is analyzed. So what is the major issue that's being looked at here? Um, so have a think about how this would work in the geography units as we go through them. Students state their conclusions and reasons, and then groups can discuss the dilemma and... Um, talk about disagreements and conclusions and who agrees with um, different point, these different points of view. So each group would state their conclusion and the best reasons for reaching that conclusion. So students actually have to work together. Teacher can ask questions to the groups to find out uh, how the processes came through on how they developed a um, solution to the moral dilemma that they've been given. And then role plays can be used as well in these situations. And those are quite good to um, help students with their empathetic understanding. Values clarification. This is one that's used quite a bit. So this aims to have students clarify their own values and preferences. And this can come in the later years of primary school and into high school. It assumes, though, that all types of values can be clarified that values are internal to the learner, that what is right is determined by each individual. It also assumes that children are born good, but society can confuse them and make them bad. That's what values clarification um, focuses on there and assumes. But how to teach through values clarification? So this can be learned through different activities such as rank ordering, different types of values. Role playing comes in through again. Um, confronting, confronting value issues, debates, and creating a personal coat of arms. I remember doing that in school. Asking questions like, are you pleased about that? What would be the consequences of doing that? And are you going to act on the idea? Um, this is a consideration that I've used before when teaching about values education. It may not matter that student A likes Mozart, but student B likes the sex pistols? Does it matter if student C thinks that it's acceptable to discriminate against females, but student D thinks it is wrong? How are these two situations different? Two different opinions in both situations, but one seems a bit more unacceptable. Have a think about that because we're looking at aesthetic values in one and moral values in another. Let's talk about how they're different. And action learning was the fifth one that we looked at. Um, so action learning aims to teach students rational and logical ways to examine issues involving, va involving values and provide opportunities for personal and social action. So that would be probably more later on in the upper years um, when we're looking at how to make changes and so forth for, for society. So how to teach it, we're looking at the problem, there's an issue, so it could be an environmental problem, um, analysis and clarification of the problem or issue, so the students need to be able to look at it and see what the problem is, um, generation of reasonable alternatives, so what could be done in order to rectify the problem or issue. Students need to be considering the consequences and act, of acting on each of the different possibilities and an evaluation of those consequences. Are they likely to occur? Which are in, the best, in my best self-interest and which are morally acceptable? And formulating a decision or a test 
of how the decision um, works according to feasibility. Can it be actually work? Should it work? Should it happen? Okay, so this is all. So these um, here show you different processes of uh, values education. Okay, so just going back for a moment, values inculcation, that's more of in the younger years, and we pr proceed through. So values analysis comes into play more in stage one and stage two and so forth, and moral reasoning throughout there we can use on different topics. But in particular, values clarification, we're working through um, different activities that students can do to start asking questions to clarify the values that they have at the moment and action learning even a little bit later on in the stages where students can start making change or talking about change okay all right so what values do we actually teach so our own values inform our planning and teaching and what others think are important may be different from what we think are important but we do need to know what the policies are surrounding values education so values became more obviously a part of the curriculum as policies changed. And the ones on the screen there, the values there, I will show you a website that also um, mentions these as well. They were identified for the na National Framework for Values Education in Australian Schools. So have a look at these that are on the screen here. What do you think of those? Are they appropriate values for Australian schooling? Care and compassion, doing your best, fair go. Um, when I first came to Australia, I didn't know what that meant, fair go. It was an interesting, I've never, <laughs> it's quite new to me. Freedom, honesty and trustworthiness, integrity, respect, responsibility, understanding, tolerance and inclusion. Responsibility, being accountable for one's own actions, resolve differences in constructive, nonviolent and peaceful ways, contribute to society and to civic life, take care of the environment. Do you think any of these would be a problem? In particular, as we think about um, the multicultural nature of society, what do you think of these? Are there any that are missing? Let's examine those. I'm just going to um, take us out of this for a second because I just want to show you this website that you can go to. So this is it here. Um, so curriculum.edu.au slash values. A whole bunch of links on here that you could look through. So if you come down here to, there's quite a few things I wanted to show you, but there's this book here, Building Values Across the Whole School. This is about the whole school approach. If you click on that link, come down to Building Values. Um, this is kind of interesting. So in the early years, it kind of gives you some ideas of, um, where you can incorporate different values and so forth. Um, different topics. So that gives you the title, that's the middle school. So let's start at the top here. So animal care, key learning areas, studies of society environment. There's a few there. The values focus is care and compassion and responsibility. Students are learning about animals exploring the bonds that link people and animals and appreciate the importance of care and responsibility for domestic uh, animals and animals in the world. That would be interesting. So it shows you some ways in which to uh, focus different values in different topics. Some of these may not be relevant to the topics that we need to teach, but um, you can make changes and adjust as needed. Now, the other one that I wanted to show you so if you ha go to resources and click on early years, you can get some different options for, um, so here, for example, am I an Australian? And you could do that in the, I think the stage three, maybe history, um, looking at different identities and so forth. And when you click on that, you actually end up with, no, that's a different one. It's a small world here. Um, students explore a day in the life of a child in another country, specifically Japan. And it goes through all the different values that would be focused on and some different activities. 
that looks really fun. So what I'm trying to show you here is that if you go to this website here, there's so much information and so many different um, links to help you understand how values education um, can be incorporated into um, different lessons and so forth. And there's a link here on the National Framework for Values in Australian Schools. Okay. Lots of links here. I encourage you to have a look through. All right, so as you remember from the general capabilities, ethical understanding is a general capability. We talked a, a little bit about it, but it becomes very relevant here. Um, so in ethical understanding, students are looking at and exploring values, rights, and responsibilities. And that comes through in history and geography. We need to be building ethical understanding in all the different stages of schooling because it will help students to engage with difficult issues that they are going to come across in their future. They need to be able to um, navigate this type of world and all these different values, the rights of people, the interests and what's normal and what's not normal and so forth, different norms, societal norms. So ethical understanding comes through in geography and it comes through in history and it maybe comes through in a lot of other subjects too. I definitely would say in English. Um, I can't speak for, just thinking about, definitely in science for sure. Um, if you're at a religious school, it would put, come in there. So it, it does come across the different subjects. So you need to make sure that you're remembering that capability. It's quite important. So values in geography in the K-6 syllabus, um, the syllabus actually sets values and attitudes, objectives are firmly based in civics and citizenship, and students will value and appreciate these dot points here. That geography is a study of interactions between people, places, and environments, that the world is a dynamic place, that there are different perspectives of people on different geographical issues that should come through. Perspectives, we've talked about the concept of perspectives. This will continue in geography. The importance of sustainability and that intercultural understanding. So if we go back, we know that intercultural understanding is one of the capabilities there, which you can see just above ethical understanding. And the role of being an informed and responsible citizen. So this is neat. these ideas here need to come through, and that's what students need to be valuing when they study geography in K-6 to and beyond. So values in geography. Students develop, as I said, ethical understanding. They learn to investigate different um, geographical issues and evaluate their own findings against the criteria of the three there that are listed there, environmental protection, economic prosperity, and social advancement. And geographical issues can be very controversial and have different, there could be different opinions, there will be. And this is where um, exploratory talk comes in that I talked about before. Being able to listen to the opinions and perspectives of others is what's important here. Values questions. So these types of questions are related to what people should or shouldn't be doing. And they often begin with the word should. Often the best questions are those that be begin with should because they invite students to consider different points of view. So some examples of values questions. Should Australia have a treaty with its indigenous population? There will be those students who think yes and there will be those students who think no. So these should questions are quite good because they invite students to consider their own point of view and be able to justify their reasons for why they feel how they feel. Should Australia introduce a sugar tax to combat obesity? Some students may think yes and some students may think no. And these are just examples. Obviously we are going to make them relevant to what we are teaching in the classroom. So as we're going through the syllabuses and you can continue to reflect back on the history syllabus although we have finished with the history content for this unit, 
I invite you to look back on the syllabus and forward in the geography syllabus to think about what types of values questions could be asked in the syllabus's content. So these values questions are quite important to ask students because it can make them really consider their own uh, points of view on different topics. It can get them to engage in the general capability of ethical understanding. Okay, so what are the ethics involved in whether we're answering yes or no? And what are the implications of our opinions on different topics? And also we're thinking about controversial issues. So often um, in our subjects in Haas, controversial issues will come up. And I've talked about some of those previously, and I'm sure we'll be talking about those this week. All right, so this is the end of this lecture for today. I would like you to continue thinking about values questions. They will, will become very relevant as we continue um, looking through the geography syllabus, and we will be talking about values questions a little bit further this week. Thank you for the lis listening to this lecture, and I hope that you have a really great rest of your week. Thanks, everyone.